you want to follow along with me, I'm going to be in John chapter 1. I'm going to bring us a little message. Don't worry, it won't be that long. I think it was only 10 minutes in the last service. So let's see if I can, if the Holy Spirit can get a hold of me in a short period of time and bring you the truth of God's word tonight. I want to talk to you tonight as I begin about a welcome mat and what it represents. And I was telling the earlier service, it's, it's kind of ironic that I would be bringing this message tonight since we just, the Lord just blessed us with a brand new home in Appleton, a beautiful home. And I think about the welcome mat that sits outside. Now, it's not the welcome mat I would have chosen, but we got one. It's okay. Um, that's okay. One of these days, I'm going to go have one custom made that says something like, welcome to the Garnett's house. May God bless you as you enter, something like that. Because a welcome mat says something, right? What does a welcome mat say? If you've got one, you, you know what you're trying to say is a welcome mat is, is, is friendly and it represents an invitation that you're, you're, you're invited to come in, right? And I said this earlier, can you imagine if we had a welcome mat that says, uh, welcome to the Garnett's, go away, Right? It wouldn't be very inviting. It wouldn't be very welcoming. The message I want to send as people come to, to the home that God's given to us is, you're invited. Come on in. We want you to come in. Right? It, it's, a, it's a symbol of one who's made to feel welcome. Well, I want to talk this evening as I take us through um, part of the first chapter of John about God's welcome mat to us. And our welcome mat to him. And I want to show us how they're connected tonight from John chapter 1. So let me read to you from John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14, uh, 18 and 316 through 17. John doesn't tell us what the other two gospels have told us. They gave us intimate details about the birth of Christ. John doesn't do that. He has a different perspective. But he's still talking about the incarnation of the very one that Luke and Matthew speak of. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light, which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world but that the world might be saved through him. So what do these welcome mats look like? I want to share with you three quick points tonight from the Gospel of John about what these welcome mats look like. First of all, the welcome mat of the word. Okay, the word. By the way, let me just say this about the word word. In the, in the Greek, the word word is logos. And for years, I've been trying to figure out what that word logos means. Okay, it, it, it has really interesting nuances in, in terms of what it means in the Greek. But finally, it was almost like today the Lord showed me. The word logos, the word word that is mentioned here in John 1, is simply the expression of somebody. The expression. If I were to pick on Mike for a minute and say, Mike, how does Mike express himself? How does Mike reveal stuff about who Mike is and who his family is? Well, he expresses it by the way he lives, by how he treats his wife and his children, by what comes out of 
Mike's mouth, and, and, and Mike is a good one to pick on, because if you know Mike, Mike's just full of joy. Mike is just full of, he's positive. So Mike's expression of Mike is that he's positive, right? That's the, what the word really means, it's expression. And so what he's saying here is that Jesus Christ is the word, is the expression as God of God, who God is to the world. He's the welcome mat of the word, right? So God lays out the welcome mat of Jesus. He extends his welcome to man. And you think, well, why is that so significant, Pastor? Because man was broke in a broken relationship with God because of the fall in the Garden of Eden. God did not have to give us the opportunity, an invitation, a welcome to come back to him. He didn't have to. He, he would have been rightful in his holiness to judge us all under his wrath for all eternity. But because God's fullest expression is not just justice, for his, because of his holiness, but God is also a God and his fullest expression is that of love and mercy. God chose to send his welcome mat to the world in the word and in the incarnation of his son, the God man. It uh, just makes me, it gives me chills as I just said what I said. It gives me chills. Right now I'm reading a book called Knowing Christ. And it's a book that I've had on my shelf for well over probably a year now. And I just decided, you know, I'm going to pick it up and read it. And as I'm reading it, this book is all about who Christ is in his fullness. And it spends a lot of time talking about his humanity. The fact that he came in the form, not only of God, but he came in the form of man. And what that meant for us. And I was just blown away by it. I'm just more and more drawn to Jesus Christ having read that book. Just, just enthralled with who he is. Okay, he reveals himself. So he, we see in verses one through three, he who made the world. Okay, this is not a God who didn't actually, I believe Jesus Christ was the instrument scripturally that God used to speak everything to existence. So when you read Genesis chapter one and two, where it says, and God basically opened his mouth mouth and said it and it was I believe that was Jesus Christ the very one that came in the form of baby in before he came as the God man opened his mouth the very one that opened his mouth to speak the stars into existence to speak everything that we know about creation into existence he was willing to say God I'll wrap myself in flesh I'll come in the form of an, a helpless baby right and I'll come and I'll be that welcome mat to the world. Boy, if, church, if that doesn't cause us to worship him, then something's wrong. Just blows me away to think about that. He came to explain God and he, he came to explain the way of salvation and become that way of salvation. He put on that flesh in verse 18. Wow. And I think what was, what's beautiful is I was reading this book yesterday. And I've said this for years, but I've never heard anybody else say it. But can you imagine the conversation that happened sometime back in eternity before even the creation between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? We know there's going to have to be salvation. We know they're going to screw up. We know they're going to rebel against us. So who's willing to go? And you can just see that conversation between God the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. And the Son said, because of who I am in the Trinity, I'm the Son. I will be the one to go. I will put myself in flesh, and I'll go and be that revelation to them. That just makes me want to cry to think about that conversation, right? And then we see in him was life, and that life was a revelation to men, right? In him was life. What life? Eternal. I mean, yeah, he was the creator, but I think John's talking here about in him, in his very being, would be eternal life. The only way that we could have to have eternal life once again in salvation. Wow. He was, that, he was that revelation. He was the one that came to, to reveal the spiritual truth about life and that it comes from him through God. Verse 11 says he came to his own. And in the context, you could say, well, he came as the creator. He came to the world that he created. But also, very specifically, he came as Israel's promised Messiah and Savior. Wow. Let me ask you a question. If you were God, would you put on flesh? 
to come down here? I don't know if I would. I'd say I like where I'm sitting right now, Father and Spirit. I like where I'm sitting. But he willingly came to his own. He came to the world he created, and he came to Israel, the ones that he had chosen and set apart for his purposes, right? And then we see in verses 6 through 8, as part of that welcome mat, we see John came as a witness. He came as the one to testify to the light so that others would believe through him. And I think about right now, as we wait his second coming. What about us, church? What about us, those who've claimed to be witnesses to the light, that have experienced salvation? Are we testifying the light of Christ to the world that others might believe this Christmas and beyond? Then we see the second thing, we see the welcome mat of the world, okay? Welcome him, welcome him, Welcoming him means these things. First of all, recognizing him. Acknowledging that Jesus alone is the means of salvation and the way back to God. In verse 10, it says, he came to his own. The world, even though he created the world, the world did not know him. It didn't acknowledge him. You know what? You know what saddens me more than anything? Not that he came the first time and the world rejected him. I look at what we live in 2020. Most of the world has rejected. Most of the world has not acknowledged him. God bless you for being here tonight, for taking time out of your busy time with your family to be here to worship the, the Savior tonight because most of the world is not focused on that tonight. Yes, we'll celebrate by getting together tonight or in the morning and exchanging gifts, and God doesn't have a problem with that. But if that's your only reason for coming together at Christmas is to get together and be with family and eat and open some presents, then you've missed it. So God bless you tonight for being here, for coming and taking important time out of your family time to come and worship the Christ, right? Most of the world has rejected them. They have not acknowledged him. Then receiving him, not just recognizing, but receiving him, accepting his claims, placing faith in him, giving allegiance to him. It says he came to his own and those who were his own didn't receive him. They rejected him. And I think about today. I look around the world. Today, most people who are Jewish by birth have rejected Messiah. Oh, they're waiting for Messiah, but they don't believe the one that came was the right one. I was interacting with a Jewish young lady months ago, and I said, why haven't you accepted Christ as your Messiah? She said, because he's a liar and a deceiver. How sad, church. How sad that one of his own calls him a liar and a deceiver. Thank God that he opened our eyes so that we could be included in to receive their Messiah. Because he goes on to say, right, here's the good news. As many as received him, as many as willing to acknowledge him, to accept him and give allegiance to him in verse 12, right? As many as that, to those he gave the right who believed in his name, he gave the right to become sons of God. Right? And I, I ran across, uh, you probably ran across this quote. I believe it's C.S. Lewis. And it goes something like this. The son of God became man so that men might become sons of God. That's why he came. He didn't come for his own sake. He came for us. And so we see the world welcomed by the word, right? He will, he will welcome us, right? He, if we will believe, we'll receive, we'll acknowledge, we'll accept, we'll bear allegiance to him, he will then give the, he has the right, God has given him the right and the authority for us to make us children of God. Isn't that beautiful? He made us children of God. Born how? Not of natural descent. You know, I, I heard somebody years ago, this was, this was sad, I heard it from a deacon in a church in Kansas City. I asked him about his testimony about Jesus Christ. He said, I was born a Christian. I said, you really, you were born a Christian? No, you weren't. The Bible says very clearly you were born a sinner. So if you stay in that natural state, you've rejected him. You've, you're not going to have, but for those of us who are willing to, he makes us. He gives us the right to become children of God. How? Born of the flesh, according to John 3.3, 3, right? So let me, let, me, um, let me quote this from the book uh, called Knowing Christ by Mark Jones. He says this, quote, The incarnation opens up the possibility of communion between God and man, which would have otherwise been impossible, unquote. Isn't that beautiful? So here's my challenge for us tonight. First of all, have you welcomed the word? 
Have you believed? Have you trusted? Have you given him your allegiance in what he was going to do for you? Have you welcomed the word and have you been welcomed by the word? It's only through faith. If you're here tonight, I want to tell you very clearly this. Not good works that get you into heaven. It's not good works that put you in right relationship with God. The only thing that puts you in right relationship is the finished work of the cross by faith applied to our lives. Have you done that? Have you been welcomed by the word? And if you have, have you extended that welcome to others? Today, this season of the year, is a beautiful time that give the invitation. And you say, well, pastor, I, 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 I would love to have my loved one come to know Jesus, but, but I can't make them believe. They won't listen to me. It's never been God's intention for us to make anybody anything. It's simply been God's plan to use us who have received him to give others the opportunity and an invitation to trust Messiah for their salvation. Have you done that this Christmas? If not, Maybe today's the day to do it.